Welcome back to the Word in the World podcast. Where we bring you topics talking truth. Everything from the news to the New Testament. I love Julia's enthusiasm, Dang. man. That was good. Yeah, that was that was like perfectly was timed. Perfect. First yes. time we ever did it perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's All up, right. y'all? Well, it's good. Yeah. What's happening? What are we talking about? What are we doing? Hmm. Talking about tithing. Tithing. <laughs> Should we tithe? What is a tithe? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of that. All of that. Tie, tie, tie. So what is what is a tie? Let's yeah, start with what do y'all think? First thoughts. We like to do definitions first here. Yeah. So we all to, know yeah. what we're talking about. Right. Yeah. yeah. What is a tie? A tie, we know it means 10%. Yeah. yeah. So to give 10% of something. Mm-hmm. Typically money is what I'm money. used to thinking about it as in yeah. church. 10% mm-hmm. to church. 10% to your the church to that you church. are a member of. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. how we saw it. And right now we're just talking about what we what we previously Definitions. Definitions. Yeah. De- mm-hmm. Well or is that uh, a part of the definition though? No. Is True. it to your church? Impressions. First impressions. Oh. Yeah, that's just we just doing first impressions, what we maybe learned mm-hmm. or what we yes. were taught, what we thought, that type of a thing. So mm-hmm. I guess going back to definition of a tithe is ten percent. Now here's what we were taught or thought. Of your, your gross, ten percent of your gross. Oh uh, wait, is that. it gross? <laughs> is it net? I never, I never. Got of the that. gross, this is what I, I heard it. I've heard it. So I, I thought it was the net. We starting out. We starting out. Um, let's go. Because yeah. you get a bigger, br- you get. A, I would say you get a bigger break. You get a Bro. bigger break if you're doing it off your gross. I've heard that's I've pre-tax. Heard people say <laughs> stuff like this, and not people. I'm gonna say pastors mm. say I tied ten percent off my gross like they make it a point to say Mm -hmm. off my gross you know you you don't actually get a break you pay more i'm sorry after tax you so it is like i pay more yeah you're paying more what am i saying i feel like we should restart this episode because i'm saying dumb stuff this is great this is what tithing brings up oh no this is what tithing Uh, brings up okay yeah yeah yeah. yeah. so you pay more if you pay off your gross for Uh, sure that makes so much sense now i always Mm -hmm. did that and i was like lord (laughs) You know my heart, so <laughs> I ain't got it. I, 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 I got this ten. Well, hope, I have you guys? It, I hope it works. Have See, you guys ever been? We run into <laughs> you, right? <laughs> have you ever been like in a place where they would say like, if you don't pay your tides this week, you got to pay like twenty next twenty oh, next like week. Bill. Yeah, no. No. you never heard that. No, I have not. yeah, I've heard of people, Dang, bro. I've heard of situations of people not, or how do I say it? Like membership being like questioned. I have heard that like an mm. official like you haven't been given this many months. Wow. My bad. You haven't been given this many months. So <laughs> she chilling. Like, right, no. I, I got to chill. Like, no, 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 way off the chill. mark. Like, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> but um, yeah, just the idea that I say that again. The idea that um, membership, like you're not a member. Mm-hmm. Some people have it like in their bylaws. That wow. You have to tie. But you have mm-hmm. to tie. And if you don't, like somebody's holding you accountable. And yeah. that's monthly. And I don't, or it depends on when you get paid. I have no idea. I think it was over the span of a few months, but it was, it was a touchy situation because I also think that it was like someone who was sick. So oh yeah, their I've money heard those was stories. going to like to medical stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah. it disturbed me. Yeah, yeah, but it's and that's kind of yeah. why <laughs> we're even opening uh, this question up. Yeah, is because it's, it can be disturbing. Uh, we talking about um, money yeah you know and we talking about the only time outside of like maybe like professional dues Uh Mm -hmm. or if you're actually paying for a service or good where money someone's telling you money is required yeah 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 and i feel i feel like uh the right teaching about this will make you want to give more right the wrong teaching about this will make you feel incredibly burdened Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so i think uh that's that's like one of the reasons we really are going to try to break this down as best as we can yeah yeah Yeah. with the lord's help of course yes actually need his help on this one right (laughs) (laughs) so um, go ahead (laughs) so where do we see i guess like tithing for the first time or like where do we see tithing in the bible 
Yeah, let's just go with that. Just as it's a predominantly basis. in the old te- mm-hmm. not even predominantly, it's in the old testament. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> I wonder if we should say old testament though. Or old covenant. Old covenant. Mm-hmm. Old covenant. And now uh, that's like something Break that kind of has to be explained a little bit, right? Because most people kind of see and I mean the Bible's broken down as like old testament, mm-hmm. new testament, right? Mm-hmm. But that new testament starts out with the gospels, right? So you got the four gospels. Right right where jesus is actually still alive and it's giving you accounts from different perspectives of his life Mm -hmm. right but the covenant the new covenant that he brought was does not go into effect until after jesus had actually died yeah right and so even when we're talking about mentions of the tithe in the new testament we have to understand that the law was still in effect at that point in time the law requiring the tithe Mm -hmm. and sacrifices and things like that was still in full effect because jesus had not died yet right so when jason says yeah it's all in the old covenant that is a that is a fact yeah yeah so everything we read in uh exodus leviticus numbers deuteronomy that stuff was still like law and mandatory yeah up until jesus death and resurrection yeah yeah and then all that stuff became complete right no more right. like need for you to be in god's like you didn't have to do all that stuff to stay in god's good graces right? yeah. yeah you just believe and by faith now you are in his good graces you are right. righteous yeah yeah just a different time i mm-hmm. was thinking about um mm-hmm. you know all the, the stuff they had to build like the temple you know the tents of meeting all of that like mm-hmm. that costs a lot of money and they don't have some of the same stuff set up that we have now so i also think part of that was to kind of make sure everybody was where they needed to be mm-hmm. in that particular time and even like stuff like i believe um the the priest and whoever was work was working in the temple the levites and stuff like that they didn't have land they didn't have any of this stuff their fo- their land was essentially that space so mm-hmm. god had to make a way for everybody to be accounted for not just the building the resources but also the uh the people that were there that could not work mm-hmm. if everybody gives 10 that will secure enough for that particular yeah, the situation yeah. yeah so mm-hmm. i feel like there was a a practical part too that's different than how we operate in churches today mm. Mm. so but what else is going on with it because i know yeah. you kind of well i guess um like where was the you were saying when was the first time yeah, oh, yeah yeah well i was going to ask the question of like uh mm. what were they tithing because was it money mm. you know in the old testament a lot of us kind of have an idea to that like okay well they were in the old testament and money wasn't around because it was just so long ago and so mm-hmm. old you know but the first mention of the tide that you see is actually in genesis chapter 15 where you have this interaction between abraham and melchizedek right and abraham just won like this battle melchizedek comes to tell him like hey god gave you that battle you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying and abraham pays him a tithe which was a tenth of the spoils of the war he had just fought mm. And so we kind of think, okay, Abraham. I'm sorry, Abraham or, paid Melchizedek okay. a okay. time. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. But like right before that chapter, because mm-hmm. we're talking about like, was a tithe paid? I mean, could it have been paid with money? You know, mm-hmm. in Genesis 14, you see that Abraham is it's clearly spoken about that he has, you know, gold and silver. Like he has, he has money mm-hmm. already. So money did exist at this point in time. It wasn't that they had to pay with food and things like that because there was no money. Mm-hmm. It's just that that wasn't the intention of the tithe. And we'll, we'll talk about that mm-hmm. a little bit more too, you know. But um, yeah. but yeah, another interesting thing, right, is like, uh, and here's a clear example of it, is people will say that, well, you know, because we'll make the argument like, well, it was required by the Mosaic law. And so you'll hear people's rebuttal to that, well, there were instances of people tithing prior to the mosaic law being given mm-hmm. True. so what about that you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and so but we also see animals being sacrificed yeah. prior to the mosaic law being given right so oh, these yeah. two follow a very similar timeline yeah. right um both prior to the mosaic law both ending at the new covenant you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. you wouldn't still be sacrificing animals today you know right. we don't but, uh, don't believe so 
Yeah, yeah. Not but for Jesus, at least. <laughs> not, yeah, not. not for Jesus. I hope not. Let me rephrase. I hope we're not doing that. We have been made free God. in Christ. <laughs> we have talked about we talked about this. Check out those previous episodes. Oh my goodness. We are free. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I guess we're kind of like asking this question. Like we talked about it when we first opened the episode. Like mm-hmm. this idea that like people were kind of required to pay a tithe, whether it being in the bylaws or you know the church sending you letters, you know, to yeah. your mail and stuff Notices. like that. And so we got to answer this question, like are we actually required to pay a tithe now right you mm-hmm. know because it's always preached from well no i'm not gonna say always not but always. usually often, yeah. often malachi what is it three ten that's the verse or, right there. it's really yeah. three like eight to twelve yeah and it's very very like uh it's it's a bit condemning mm-hmm. because it it starts off should a man cheat god yeah or like will that, a man right? rob god will a man yeah. rob god yet yeah. you are robbing me yes well let's read it let's, let's read it because it. it's very it's, good. You there? yeah i got it okay, malachi sweet. 3 8 yeah it says will a man rob a will man rob god yet you are robbing me but you say how have we robbed you in your tithes and contributions you are cursed with a curse for you are robbing me the whole nation of you Bring the full tithe into the storehouse. There you go. Mm. That there may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. And then it continues on. I'm going to open up a window of heaven. Will I not open that up? Pour you out a blessing, blah, blah, blah. Rebuke the devourer. All that good stuff. Yeah. And so (laughs) it seems to me, and I've heard, I've heard, I've heard, in my opinion, very pastors, preachers that I really respect. Mm-hmm. even preach it this way yeah mm-hmm. and it's like i'm always astonished because i'm like oh this is the first time you're like taking something totally out of context mm. like oh like them saying it to israel meant something and 99 percent. and i'm not trying to bash whatever but like yeah. Yeah. and tithing is okay and we're gonna get to all that but i'm just yeah. saying like giving us good it just seems like with this particular issue there is like avoidance of digging yeah. into the truth or context what's going on. Yeah, any context of that and yeah. all of that and yeah. but not not to say that every pastor is like that of course but this is like a recurring thing for you know i, I think reasons that we could probably like talk about yeah because it's money and you know how are we gonna keep the lights on type of thing right right mm-hmm. but like that that this passage is very very specific it is in the context Mm -hmm. it's not oh your storehouse is where where you're a member of your church and you know god Mm. no this was a storehouse for the levitical priest who actually needed (laughs) food and goods yes to live because they were told not to work Mm -hmm. yeah wow you know what i mean like so you can't just be like because i've heard it like i'm getting mad my bad. Let it's me okay. pipe that. Don't get mad. We're all Don't free. We are free. Why are you I mad, bro? It like <laughs> your storehouse is wherever you worship. Yeah. No, it's not. Right. Stop that. Yeah. This is a real storehouse. You can even. It's not. Okay. But you know what I mean. All right, Marcus. <laughs> I'm sorry. You need to tap out for me. Yeah, I need to step out. <laughs> but I guess like <sighs> here's the thing, right? It's this like if great. we are to do like this mm. kind of of a correction thing where it's like okay all right they are misusing what the tithe was about can we talk about (laughs) you know like what the tithe was actually for when when god required it or commanded it to Mm. the nation of israel underneath the mosaic law yeah and like the more you start to dig into it (laughs) you start to see okay like like jason just said there are three different tithes and so much of the modern day church that is implementing this has decided that they're going to, they're going to choose one of the three tides mm-hmm. right but what about the other two tides and like like what Dang. it's the lord's tie the tie the feast and the poor man's tie yeah and then like one of those tides right i can't remember specifically which one but it's like everybody um kind of like saved up their tithe mm-hmm. and then they all got the together yeah and so they had this gigantic feast where they were like drinking wine and celebrating the greatness of god and you know Mm -hmm. all kind of 
celebrating with the tithe that they had saved up for this particular feast. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, we don't see that tithe today. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's commanding that one. That's not a requirement to be a member of a church yep. anymore. You know what I'm saying? So, But we've selected the one that will actually be beneficial to, and I'm not going to say like the pastor or anybody like that, but just like that. We picked the one that is, I guess, God, why am I nervous to say this? Because it's, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. We picked the one yeah, that is most beneficial to the, <laughs> the church and yeah. the preachers who are preaching this word. I say yeah. it's easier to apply. 10% is very God, simple. That than like, hard. You know, <laughs> oh the goodness. other ones are harder, I think, because of the all the other things involved in it. This is mm. simple. It's much easier to be like, give 10%. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? The other ones require like a story. You got to break it down and... What, how do I tie ten percent of my groceries to the church and like all oh, like what's ten percent of like what's yeah. in my fridge? Like right. how do you figure that mm -hmm. out? Yeah. So ten percent money wise is way easier. Yeah. And then we, it gets more interesting, right? Because when you really start to look at these tithes and uh like what God was saying about them, he asked him specifically to pay with food and mm -hmm. livestock. You know, and right. you start to get this pattern, this theme that as God talked about the tithe, he was always talking about like things that only he could provide. So for instance, like just, you know, looking at when the tithe was actually required by the Mosaic law, it wasn't until they got to the promised land, the land that God had provided them mm -hmm. because Moses was talking about the tithe before they even got there, mm -hmm. right? He was giving them the law before they got to this promised land and they weren't required to pay a tithe on that. Mm -hmm. God has set apart this particular place mm -hmm. where he said like, once you get there, the land that I have given you, the land that I have provided, you will pay a tithe of the land to me, mm -hmm. right? And then they paid on things, like I said earlier, like food, and livestock mm -hmm. and none of those people could make food <laughs> or livestock on their own this was these were things that again were purely god provided all right so when we start to talk about like the purpose of the tithe right the purpose of the tithe was in my mind you know or from well, my which study one? which one you know right. well all of them like <laughs> this one is in common to all of them it was yeah. an acknowledgement that the provision had been made solely from God. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to keep in mind when we're talking about it is like, these were not things that people could work for. Yeah. Right. And so in fact, if you tried to pay a tithe that as, as it was re required by God mm -hmm. with money, there was actually a penalty. Mm -hmm. There was a penalty payment to go on top of it. Mm -hmm. Right. So now you're talking about 20% or more or something like that. 20% added to the monetary uh, equivalent value yeah. of the time. My man yeah. be on the references. Like, yes, I appreciate I'm, you. I'm trying to, <laughs> I appreciate yeah. you. I'm with you. But yeah, there was a real penalty for trying to pay the tithe with money, mm -hmm. you know? And so the purpose of that is like you're trying to pay with something that you work for and you really can't. There's a penalty for trying to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I need you to acknowledge that I solely provide it. And so what we're looking for as with all things in the old testament as with all things wow. in the mosaic law is how does this point to christ yeah you know what i'm saying and so yeah let's talk about that let's talk yeah about that. and so you start to see like well, okay can you work for christ you know you can't work for christ meaning right? like like for what he's giving you yeah like like, like well, oh yeah it. i definitely took that the wrong way i'm like yeah sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i mean like <laughs> So remember, like, God way. was saying, okay, like, I want you to acknowledge that I solely provided for you, mm -hmm. right? And so when we look at Christ, right, he says, like, going back one more time, like, God is saying, look, I solely provided life for you. Mm -hmm. So you acknowledge that you received this life, you okay. know what I'm saying? And so when we look at Christ, like, that's what, it's the same thing. It's like God solely provided Christ. Like, we didn't do anything to earn Christ. We didn't right. do anything to earn this life that we received from him. But in turn, we acknowledge that we have received Christ mm -hmm. with our own lives. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, like, if you want to pay, a, we, I gave my life to Christ. Yeah, that's like right. that's it. Like mm -hmm. that's the tithe. The tithe is us giving. Like that's the new version. That's the New Testament version of the tithe. Is us giving our. Or the tithe is a shadow of that because you see scripture yeah. where in Colossians and in Hebrews talking about the festivals and the feasts being a shadow of things to come. Mm, yeah, it's like the tithe is a shadow of the christ to come right you know what I mean? yeah absolutely like mm -hmm. all things point to christ and mm -hmm. we we can't just you know like like the reason i guess like this particular topic like like 
I want to say irks my nerves. <laughs> the reason that it bothers me though is because it's one of those things that we don't really like dig into. We don't really spend much time with. We yeah. don't really try to understand. We kind of just take it at face value and we're obedient to whatever was taught to us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it it really kind of goes back to like how we got to dig into the word and really understand God as much as we possibly can. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If not, then we see this we can see this thing completely the wrong way yeah you know and be obedient to something that it, that has nothing to do with what's going on yeah you mm -hmm. know today so what you got to say she yeah come on me. julia no i was just thinking <laughs> oh. thinking listening and uh processing one thing i just looked up some stuff in nehemiah i don't know mm -hmm. how i got here but i was in nehemiah 10 and it re references the storehouse mm -hmm. and how they were supposed to be giving ties but it sounds like it was made into a law mm. so i'm yeah. just connecting that to malachi maybe malachi is saying hey this is not just a suggestion this yeah. is this is why he's mentioning it. it just it connected the dots for me i didn't really see that before. yeah they weren't doing it yeah right. and so it's like breaking yeah it's like the, sinning yeah. yeah and the whole thing with that scripture for me i think it sheds light on the fact that like God had to actually make law because what happened was the Levitical priest didn't get any land right. when yeah, all the I'm other tribes at. got land. So they needed to be provided for because they would have no crops or no, right. you know, uh, livestock and stuff like that. They had no ownership rights to any of it. So, but it makes me, it messes me up because God is like, yo, I know y'all not going to take care of them if what? I leave it up to y'all. <laughs> wow. So let me make it law, like, in mm. my word now so that y'all will actually give them 10% and they'll have something to eat. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. So it's just nuts to me. Like, that's how, like, how wicked we are without God, like, helping us out in these different ways. Right. Right. Yeah. Which piggybacking off of that i think i want to make sure that we also say that giving is good and oh, is yes. biblical yes you That's do need to give yeah. there are uh um, there's plenty of places houses of god that need resources actual financial resources mm -hmm. not just prayer I mean, sometimes we like to just focus on well i'll just pray for them mm -hmm. it's like but you got 20 dollars in your pocket you could give that too that would help them mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um so i, I want to make sure that we say that and that i we know we articulate that it's that part is important. Um, I think in the New Testament, I don't know if we got there yet, mm. uh, but in the New yep. Testament, there's a focus more on generosity out of the heart. Since, like you said, since Christ has given so much to us, he is the one that's given us all the things that we have. Why not give a significant portion? You know, that's something I think between you and God, everybody has to, to decide that. Mm -hmm. um, give a portion of whatever your resources are so that if you want to say it's beyond money i think that's a good idea too so mm. money but you know skills talents whatever uh, other resources life. yeah, yeah life yeah. there's Everything. human resource stuff you can think about there's plenty of stuff that we can actually give to help contribute but do we really want to do that i think is the question we all have to figure out and think through um and i would say too it also helps from a um connecting with god and like relating to god uh, what me and my mm. husband have been doing recently is we did give 10 percent for quite a while but that was because i was more on the not giving side mm. like i was that person like i need you to give me a percentage otherwise <laughs> i'm gonna be like yeah one percent is good mm, yeah. so 10 helps me to like if, if, just to start out to be consistent and we started fine. with that yeah. yeah so we started with that but then recently we was like well but that does that take away from talking to god about what he wants us to give hmm. as opposed to just assuming it's yeah. always 10 so like that's been a blessing to us to kind of think through we pray about it of course first mm -hmm. and then we talk about it and then we're like hey babe what do you think we should mm -hmm. what should we it's not should, will we give it's how much yeah so that's kind of a cool thing that we can yeah. i feel like that helps Ooh. what i'm saying yo in leviticus <laughs> i'm yeah. sorry i'm jumping no back. go ahead <laughs> we can yeah. go back you could you could, re <laughs> you could redeem your tithe what wow. do you mean like read it back Every tithe of the land, I'm <laughs> Leviticus wow. 27 and 30. Uh, if a man wishes to redeem some of his tithe, he shall add a fifth to it. Mm. We don't hear that. Nah. Like, oh, yeah. let me get that back right. and I'll get you with, you know, a little fifth Extra more later. Five later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Never. But my point with, inter in, with uh, just entering that fact is like, yeah. 
in the New Testament, it talks about like the law versus, you know, yes. obviously being yeah. free from the law. Yeah. If we believe that we have to stick to the tithe, if you're going to introduce one iota of the law into mm -hmm. your life in that way, now that is your judge. Yeah, that's yeah. Now problem. you have to be perfect according to the law of Moses. Wow. And who wants to do that when Christ has already said, I fulfilled it. You don't need to do that anymore. Just believe in me and you're fine. But if you start tithing, because people could sometimes tell you that you'll be cursed with the curse. Yeah. If you don't tithe because of that Malachi verse. Listen, you can live by the law if you want, but just know that's going to be your judge. Wow. No. So you got to do animal sacrifices. You got to do everything that's in the law of Moses perfectly to reach salvation, to go to heaven including tithing and all three tithes and you got to do all the festivals you got to do everything yeah yeah this is killing what? me right yeah. now and yeah. I, I, it goes back like something you said earlier right like mm -hmm. um about you and your husband like because like kind of going to god and praying to him and asking him, what should we be giving right yeah and like, that's a spirit-led thing mm -hmm. right versus like some required law type thing you know, mm -hmm. and then just echoing Jason's point, like the New Testament is constantly telling us. Or so Paul, you know, even is saying like Paul, James, Hebrews, is every, everybody, yeah. yeah, like like we're no longer under this law. Instead, we are being led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if we're under the Spirit, then like what requirements? You know, and that's that's the hard. I think it's a hard thing to believe. You know, for for some of us that yeah. we are truly like freed because christ fulfilled all of it yeah you know what i mean like it's it's hard to think like wow like i'm really just to be led by the spirit yeah like i don't have to do none of these no work requirement yeah require works you no know work. what i'm saying i ain't gotta pay a certain fee and all i ain't gotta do none of that you know it's hard to fathom that yeah yeah I was, but it, it might be even harder go ahead go ahead i was, I was gonna was, say just personally <laughs> i was resonating with that because i do think that the way we're giving now actually is more spiritually beneficial yeah mm -hmm. like technically we were giving more before but it felt like a bill like okay we gotta right. pay sprint and then we gotta pay verizon and then we <laughs> gotta pay god That's how it is. yeah i gotta pay my god bill and that takes it takes away from it a little bit and i'm just resonating with what y'all are saying like i feel like it's it's much more spiritually beneficial in that regard. Yeah. Also, it makes me think about how many people have this perception of church that they are constantly just asking for money, for yeah. money, for money. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, if you went into churches and churches actually acknowledge this fact that tithing is no longer a requirement and they did away with it, would people still feel that way? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, would they, yeah. would they still have this idea like, oh, well, in order for me to become a member of a church i gotta pay a bill you right. know so it's like have we actually yeah. and this is the case with most false teachings which teaches you their origin mm -hmm. right is they create a barrier between right. the unbeliever and god mm -hmm. at some level you know what i'm saying so like it's a commonality between with all with every false teaching that exists is mm -hmm. it creates a new barrier Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that that's what we see, like, because I used to, when I used to think, okay, the tithe is required, that's immediately what I thought is like, man, like, if I skip church this week, I might save some money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah. like, practically. I think, I think getting the point across, though, of being a giving person and God and his spirit of generosity is part of his character. Right, right, right. You know, like yeah. John 3.16, yeah. everyone knows, is he gave his son. Mm -hmm. So, like, that is the core message that now in the new covenant, as children of God, yeah. we should be focused on. Like, and it can, I guess I'm thinking, like, it can still make you feel some type of way because it says, like, he who gives so sparingly will mm -hmm. reap sparingly yeah yeah in second corinthians mm -hmm. and it's talking about you know god loving a cheerful giver in that yeah. same passage so like yeah you you got if there are repercussions in some way of like you're giving yeah, yeah. so that's not the point of what we're trying to uh get at today of like if you tithe go ahead if that's what you feel like to do yeah but you don't have to do it according to scripture like yeah. The, they're not going to get in trouble yeah it's the numeric value i think is what you're pointing to because they're still according to scripture in the sense of 
giving generously because yeah. i feel like you can even and i've heard some people share this before let's say you happen to be wealthy mm -hmm. you could technically like be in sin by only giving 10 if god has placed it on your heart you know yeah. i think you could give 20 and be totally fine right mm -hmm. whereas someone who's less fortunate all they can do is five mm -hmm. yeah like that reminds me of the uh what was that one scripture that one lady in scripture that um what did she give? She had like not a uh, lot. Oh, two yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like yeah. Yeah. But God was like, she gave more than all of y'all. Because mm -hmm. yeah. relative to where she is, I think that's where we're really supposed to be at. Yeah. yeah. It was something. They, they could have maybe tied, but Jesus was like, nah, that's not enough compared to what she did. Yeah. It was something that you um, talked about earlier today. I was hoping you could speak to a little bit, but like sure. the acts mentality. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like believers in the book of Acts, like uh -huh. like what they were doing, you know, because we, when we're talking mm. about giving, because the, the purpose of this episode is not to tell you do not give. Right. You know what I'm saying? But it's like the purpose of the episode is do not give out of obligation. Yeah. Do not give because somebody has put the place, the burden on you. Do not give because you feel as though it's a requirement, mm. but give out of love. You yeah. know, it's give with a cheerful heart. You know what I'm saying? And like, like give it 10% is is a is a number that you know for some people is like oh that's really really high because other people can go over that you know what i'm saying right. but like julia earlier was talking about like what believers were doing in the book of acts you know and they were like basically selling all their belongings you know when we're talking about giving like this is on a whole nother level mm -hmm. they were selling all their belongings and it said that nobody was without you mm -hmm. know, because they sold all their belongings and use that money to benefit other believers. Yeah. You know, so like, yeah, when we talk about giving, I mean, like, if you really want to give, right? Yeah. That's the epitome. Yeah, tithing yeah. you might like more compared to that. Right, like sell everything. <laughs> right. I mean, the gospels are kind of like that too, right? It's like if you really want to follow me, yeah, to the rich man, yeah, sell everything you have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's like, mm -hmm. nah, I'm good. Yeah, that's it's a I, tough you brought up an, a, an important point about like not giving you know with this like feeling like you got to or mm -hmm. somebody mandating it like yeah second corinthians again nine uh and verse seven each one must do justice he has purpose in his heart not grudgingly or under compulsion for god loves a cheerful giver wow so it's like yeah. if you're tithing Mm. technically like mm -hmm. your offering may not even be pleasing to god because yeah. again he doesn't need money right he's after your heart yeah mm. so if you're giving it that in matters, a way yeah. that is like oh, i gotta yeah. give it ebenezer again ebenezer <laughs> not <Baptist>. ebenezer <laughs> shout you know out to saying? whoever goes to ebenezer <laughs> i don't we're know. not ebenezer. calling it. that's the first <laughs> that's the first church name oh. that i've ever heard before uh. okay. But wow. like, dude, <laughs> you know, it'd be crazy if somebody from Ebenezer was listening to this. Like, like, yeah, oh, you, <laughs> this is hitting me so hard. He said Ebenezer. Like, <laughs> he's talking to me. <laughs> it's like he's talking to me. <laughs> That's because Jason is anointed. Uh -huh. So, oh, oh uh -huh. man, oh anyway. man, he start calling out names. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but oh, yeah, gosh. that's the whole point. Uh, like. There's scripture that quick and I think like the old, Te of course, it's in the Old Testament, but he's like, you know, he doesn't need the blood of goats and bulls. Like, right. he, doesn't, he don't need none of that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. You don't need your money. And I love, I love the fact that you brought up um, the fact that he's like looking at our hearts. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and, and that's all he's ever really looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, it's our hearts and like, are we going to our hearts our hearts in the right position yeah. you know what i'm saying that's that's when it comes to everything so like god would much rather your heart be in the right place than you give like think about what you said you know what i'm saying i mean i know you already know but like think about what jason said like he would rather your heart be in the right place than you give all of your money right to the church begrudgingly right you know what i mean so yeah yeah so oof. i forgot where it's at um you know, I think it's in Acts where verse. Paul is talking to, I forget which church, but he just talks about how even in their poverty, mm -hmm. you know, they gave and supported and how he, he was just like applauding them for that. Like it's really showing like your spirit and how, um, you know, the gospel has like convicted you to do right. That you're yeah. giving happily, even though you don't even have it. Wow. Um, so, yeah, man. Yeah. I can't. 
Yeah, I can't find a verse, but I wanted to also recommend Second Corinthians eight and nine. Mm-hmm. That's a, a passage that a lot of talks about, that talks about a lot of um, stuff related to giving, giving from the heart, kind of like what you were saying. Mm-hmm. I was looking for a verse, I couldn't find it, but check that out if y'all want to look into some New Testament stuff. There is talk about giving, but it's more about um, the heart oh, yeah. than this anything whole else. Chapter in my in my uh, in the NASB is yeah. titled "Great Generosity." Wow. Yeah. The whole section. So yeah, there's some good stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is what I was just talking about. The oh, well, Macedonia. Look at that. Look yes, at that. the anointing is flowing. Wow. Oh my Here we go. Across. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> check out the check out the previous episode. Uh, yeah. But I think I'm we done. uh yeah. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can. answer some questions. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to yeah. pass out with anger. <laughs> From the heart. Uh, all right, well. Fair that's enough. it. That's Ties, it. If you if you well what's our final thoughts, I guess? Like yeah. Well, I was just thinking you too. Brought up a good point. Yeah, one of the questions wasn't there like a sub question about giving to other places. Maybe yeah. We can oh yeah. And with that, can you was it given other? Oh, we'll give like, other places, and can you give in other ways? Yeah. Right. So I think well, we kind of answered that. I just want to make sure it's, it's clear. I think I think you can. Wow. Um, at least my, my thought is I think you can, but I, if you neglect the church completely, I would be concerned about that. Is what I would say. Mm-hmm. I think there should be something you're giving to a local church. Yeah. But how you want to split it? That's between you and God. That's my two cents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I think a big part of that is uh, is knowing where your church is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if you if you find that the church has need, mm-hmm. then maybe your ties should go to or your. Uh oh. Uh oh. You're giving. Your mandatory time, brother. You're giving <laughs> all to go to support the church that <laughs> yeah. is in need. But if your of church course. is doing good mm-hmm. and you feel a need outside of the church that yeah. God is directing your attention to. Right. You know, there's nothing wrong with you giving your tithe. It's okay. <laughs> you know, it's just you're really giving to, it. to, an- <laughs> to, to another place. <laughs> it's just a word. <laughs> yeah, man. It's okay. I mean... <laughs> I don't like and that be word. responsible with it too. Like, yeah. if you don't just give to a, don't just close your eyes and say, "I'm Good gonna go point. give to that church," right? Because you just want to give to a church. Like, nah, figure out like mm. if they what are handling they doing? money yeah. responsibly mm-hmm. and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and be absolutely like confident and yeah, yeah. that you are. So you could be cheerful about it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you won't be cursed with a curse. No. I think that's yeah, the curse very is important not a, to know. Not for no. that. Maybe other things. But. Yeah. That verse in Malachi <laughs> yeah. was for the children of Israel back then. Yep. Right. Yep. Different in laws. In BC. BC. <laughs> yes. There you go. In the yes. BC era. The old covenant. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, gang. See y'all. Later.